Hi everyone. I want to wish you all a very happy Diwali right now. And just like how we have firecrackers in Diwali, Humpy has started off with a pataka win, like a firecrackery win against Anna Muzichuk at the Women's Candidates 2022. Now, this candidates tournament is slightly different from uh, the previous one. So there are eight players in all in this candidates. Let me just show you. So there are two pools that have been created, Pool A and Pool B. Pool A has Anna Muzichuk, Hampi, Le Tingyi, Maria Muzichuk. And Pool B has Katrina Lagno, Goryachkina, Tan Zongi and Koschenyuk. So uh, Pool A is currently going on in Monte Carlo and Pool B will happen later in November. From each pool, a winner will be selected and they will play against each other. Uh, in the finals of the candidates and the winner will then play for the world championship match against Juvenju. So just to uh, <laughs> showcase who are the four players who are playing here, they are uh, Maria Muzichuk, Le Tingyi, Hampi and Anna Muzichuk. And in the first uh, quarterfinals, like the quarterfinals, they will play four games against each other and Anna Muzichuk and Hampi are facing off and Le Tingyi and Maria Muzichuk are facing off against each other. This is how uh, the schedule is and after the first four games we have a rest day. Uh, then after two days, two games there is a rest day then there is third and fourth. Then if there is no tie breaks then there are two rest days then you have the semi-finals and then uh, I think later on in the year Maybe in December or so, we will have the finals. It is happening in Hotel Hermitage in Monte Carlo. Let's go to the game of Hampi and Anna Muzichuk and you will have to guess some moves. It was a very, very small game, short game, 24 moves only. So let's begin. Hampi opens with D4. Muzichuk plays D5, C4, DC4. Knight to f3, knight f6, the queen's gambit accepted is on the board, e3, you want to win this pawn, just so that you know, b5 is not really a great idea, because of a4, and if your opponent plays c6, then you can take, take, and a very typical move here is b3, and you can't hold on to these pawns, if he takes, there's a check, and then you can pick this up. So e6 was played, bishop takes c4, c5, castles, a6 and now the move that is kind of trending is b3. Uh, you delay the development of the knight on c3, on b1, so that if black really goes b5, bishop e2 and let's say bishop b7 or knight bd7, you can later on hit with a4. And then if b4, your knight can go from d2 to c4. So that's a key idea. But Muzichuk went knight bd7. Humpy now uh, played uh, bishop e2 coming back. b6 was played. As you see, she's not going b5. And now your first question in the game, what did Humpy play here? And she didn't play a normal move, which is bishop b2. She played something different in this position. What did she do? I think this was part of Humpy's opening prep and I really liked the move that uh, she played because it showed that she was well prepared for the game. She went knight e5 and this has been played before by Ding Lijen on several occasions. In fact, he's done it against Aronian uh, many times. I think Aronian and Ding had a match on chess.com speed chess championship and there they played many uh, games with this. Now, if you were to take on e5, then after de, it's a playable position. It's not like not playable, but if you trade queens, oops, sorry, not queen d2, but if you trade queens, rook takes d1, and let's say knight d7, then after bishop b2, this is already a better position for white uh, because of knight d2, and the knight is coming from c4 to d6. And as we already know, a move like b5 would be hit with a4 when white is better. Okay, so knight e5, 
Humpy went, uh, Muzichuk went bishop b7 and now for your next point, what did Anna, um, Humpy play here, white to play? So Humpy made this very nice little move, bishop f3 and she is getting rid of this important bishop and looking at the weakened c6 square. Takes, queen takes and now came the move bishop d6. Humpy took, knight takes and here she took quite a bit of time and played bishop a3. This and the next move, she took a lot of time. Queen b8 was played here. The, the point is that you want to castle it out here, which you think is a good move. But then after knight d2, you have certain problems to solve because you still can't take on d4 and the knight is coming to e4, putting pressure on c5. Maybe Humpy, uh, maybe Muzichuk could have played queen b8 now. And this could have been a better way to continue. But she went queen b8 and now... An important move here by Humpy, she played it, knight c, uh, d takes c5. Knight takes and now a check on c6, which forces the opponent to give up castling, king e7. And then she played knight d2. And now, just turning the tables here, it's black to play now, not white. I've been asking questions for white, but black to move. What did Anna Muzichuk? What should Anna Muzichuk play that cleanly equalizes the game here? I think this was the moment and the first natural move that comes to us is to kick the queen away. So we think of rook c8, which is not bad, but it's not a clean equalizer. A clean equalizer here is queen b7. If you would have found this, fantastic. Because after takes, takes, it's an equal position. She went rook c8, Humpy went back. But I think Anna was a little bit greedy. She took here, king h1, and now she had to be very accurate. The move had to be found was bishop e5 attacking the rook. And after rook c1, you go king f8. You are trying to escape and you go to g8. And I think this is a holdable position. You are running away with the king. But the moment she played bd6, which is a natural move because you want to sort of break this pin here. Humpy now found uh, a series of excellent moves. First, knight c4, attacking the bishop. And here came the, the critical mistake of the game. It was important to play king e8 so that the bishop could drop back to e7 or f8. But she went king f8. And now with this, uh, you have to find one after the other. What's the best move here for white? Okay, the best move here is rook a d1. Well done if you found this. Also possible was rook f d1. Equally good, you are hitting the bishop on d6. Rook a d1, bishop goes back to e7. Now your next question, what do you do here? Important one. The only move. And I think if you think a little deeply, deeply you find it, you must take the knight. Okay, pawn takes, was done. Now the next move, what do you play? White to play. Actually, your last move was played so that this move was possible and that is rook d7 because the knight is controlling the d7 square. Now you get in with your rook here. You aren't, you. I mean, you have a threat as such because the biggest threat here is rook b7 trapping the queen. So black plays the move rook a7 and now again your move, what should you play? I think this is a very important moment and Humpy finds the best move. Okay, if you play knight e5 which is very tempting because f7 there's a mate. And if you take here then uh, knight d7 and uh, sorry queen f7 is a mate, knight d7 loses the queen. But if you play queen e5, I have rook takes a7, all of this works well for white. But what doesn't is f6. And after this, it's not easy for white to win the game. So the right move here is knight to d6. And kudos if you found this. Because now there's a mate here. And you can't take with the bishop because it's still mate. So took with the queen and now your move. What do you do? 
is the final move and if you were tempted by rook takes d6 then you are wrong because after bishop d6 black is defending the position it's better for white still but black is solid rook takes a7 was played by humpy and just totally winning yeah this position is just completely uh, winning and white uh, takes ho home the full point uh, here uh, anna muzichuk resigned the game and this was a big big win for humpy uh, and a great start to this match as well because now with this win she is uh, really has a firm footing in this matchup uh, one nil up and needs only one and half points out of three games let's hope that she manages to win and then goes to the semis and then eventually the finals and then uh, sort of fights for the highest title and wins it because i think that's the only missing uh, element in her career right now she's won almost everything else and we wish humpy the best for now this was a wonderful game this is sagasha signing off bye bye